What's going on everyone, Mario here with Nickel Prince. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can start setting up your gang sheets for DTF. Now, this is something that a lot of people have been having issues with. Hopefully, this video can clear it up for you. Now, for this, I am going to be using Photoshop, but the same things that I'm showing you here, the same principles, you can really apply them pretty much anywhere else. Now, if you don't have Photoshop, that's totally fine. If you want to sign up for it, just go ahead and check out the link down in the description below. You can go ahead and check that out so you can get started with Photoshop. But if you don't want to go with Photoshop and you want to go with the free route, then you can also use a program called GIMP. GIMP is pretty much the free version of Photoshop. And that's the only other one I would really recommend. If you decide to use something like an online service, like let's say Canva, it works. But the problem with Canva is that you also need to have a premium subscription to be able to download your design or your gang sheet at the appropriate resolution. Now, a little bit more on that in a few minutes. Let's just go ahead and get started. So over here, we have Photoshop open. And the first thing I'm going to do is simply just go ahead and create a new document. Now, what I'm going to show you here is imperative. This is something that you absolutely need to do. And always remember your resolution. It has to be 300. 300 is what's going to get you the best, the most crisp prints. And if you go anything lower than that, typically the next step down is 72. It's it's not gonna come out good. The images might come out a little bit pixelated, they might come out a little bit blurrier than you intend them to. So for best results, always stick to a resolution of 300. And that's also something that you should do when you're actually setting up your designs or when you're making your designs. Or let's say if you're downloading something from Kittle or whatever it is, then always make sure that you're downloading your images at 300. This is what's gonna get you the best possible quality. Now besides that, typically speaking, gang sheets, they're gonna be 22 inches. So make sure that your width is set to 22 inches, no more, no less. And then your height, that's really going to depend on how many feet your gang sheet is going to be. So just as a quick example, let's say that we're going to have a five foot gang sheet. So what we're going to do is simply just do five times 12 inches and we're going to have 60 inches. So if we're doing a five foot gang sheet, we're going to be looking at 60 inches. Now, let's say we're doing an eight foot gang sheet. We have a lot of different prints to well print. Then we're going to simply just multiply eight by uh, eight by 12 and that's going to give us 96. So height of 60. So we have our width, which is 22, which is again, going to be the standard for DTF gang sheets and the height of 60, which is going to be specific for our job. And because since we're going with five feet and again, resolution of 300, don't go any less than this. Always 300, no less. And now from this, all we have to do is simply click on create. Now, there's a few things that you need to take note of. For one, we need to get rid of that white background. Now, we can go ahead and set it up so that it never shows up in the first place. So our background is automatically clear or transparent. But I like to have the white background on there just so I can kind of easier see what I'm doing or how I'm living everything out. Simply because when you have this turned off, it gets a bit more complicated to see. It's a bit harder to see because of the checkerboard pattern. But always remember this checkerboard pattern that pretty much just means that you have a transparent background. That's what you're setting up right now. All right. So I already have a few different images imported to my Photoshop. And all I'm going to do is simply take them and I'm going to place them on top. Now, obviously, this is kind of big and we don't want it to be this big. I mean, unless you do want it to be that big. But this is one thing that you can do to resize it. Simply just go ahead and click on the image. So I'm using Windows, so control T. Now I'm just going to go ahead and take it from the corner. And if I don't click on anything or touch anything on my keyboard, then I can freely transform it and pretty much just warp everything. But we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to simply click on shift or hold down shift and then resize it. And as you can see, it keeps the original aspect ratio. Now on the bottom right, you can see that, I mean, you can't really see it because it might be blurry on the screen, but it's showing the width of about 12 inches. And that's what I'm going to go with. Typically speaking, when it comes to t-shirts, a standard is going to be about 12 by 12 inches, but this is really going to be all dependent on your customer's preferences, on your preferences, on your design, on everything. So for this one, this is just what we're going to stick with. So let's go ahead and put that at the very top corner because we want to make sure that we fill up as much of the space as possible. Here I have another one, but for this one, I'm not going to resize it on the gang sheet itself. Instead, I'm going to go to up here under image, image size. And I'm just going to resize it from here. So this one actually has a resolution of 72. Unfortunately, this is something that we are going to come across. So just go ahead and do 300. This will give it a bit of an upscale. But at the same time, as you can see here, the width is 62 and the height is 75. 
So a lot of the times what some programs do is they'll give you a really, really big image at a lower resolution. So that way when you compress it or when you make it smaller for printing, it will still have a high enough quality. So what I like to do, I do like to switch the resolution to 300 and then the width, we can go ahead and change that down to about 12 inches for the height. And then that will automatically switch it over to 10 inches for the width. And this will still give us a pretty clear and crisp image. Now, if we were to do this with an image that was already at 10 by 12 inches, if we were to switch it over from 72 DPI to 300, then it'll still upscale it a little bit because Photoshop is able to do that, but it's not going to be as good or as clear or as crisp as if it was already a big image being scaled down, if that makes any sense. So let's go ahead and click on OK. Now we don't have to do any resizing once we put it on here. So this can stay the same size. We don't have to change it. Like I said, our width is going to be 10 inches while our height is 12. Now, remember how I said earlier, I like to have the white background just so I can get a better visual re representation or so I can really see what's going on. Well, this is what I'm talking about. So if we zoom in, we can see that some of these colors are kind of are kind of hard to see. So all we have to do is just turn on our background and it's a lot easier to see. Now, another thing I like to do is simply make a color overlay of a different color or sometimes like, let's say black. So that way it stands out a lot more and you can really see what's going on. Then let's say if you have some black parts on it that you can't really see, just go ahead and turn off the overlay and then you'll have the white background so it can accentuate those parts so you can see what's going on there. Now, one quick thing to note is that on this level up image, if you can see there's a little bit of extra space on the top and on the bottom, when you're resizing your image or the entire image or the canvas, that is gonna be taken into consideration for the 12 inches. So here, if you just quickly look at it, you'll see that it's actually a little bit smaller. So it's nine by 10. So let's just increase it a little bit actually to make it the 12 by 10. There you go, about 12 by 11. Now this is something that is easily fixed. All you really have to do is just simply crop the image. So you can either click on the cropping tool or you can just press C on your keyboard and then crop it down. Typically, it will snap to the first filled pixel. And that's it. So once you do crop it, you are going to be able to go to image and then resize. And then it won't be taking into consideration any extra space that's on the image itself. So just a quick tip. All right. And then this is going to be the last image that I put onto my gang sheet. Now, this one is already sized to the actual box or the canvas. So all I have to do here is simply just make sure that everything is OK with 20 height 20 and the resolution is 300. Everything is good except for the sizing. This is a little too big. So let's go with 12. There we go. So now you can see that this one is a lot more sized up. Like the sizing to this is a lot more appropriate. It's the way it's supposed to be. So now what we need to do is fill up as much as we can of this gang sheet because we're going to be paying for every single square inch of this. So why not fill it up with everything that we can? So what I like to do is I kind of like to play Tetris. So I'm going to fill these up a little bit. As you can see, it's good right there. Those two fit well. Now I don't need too many of the level ups. I just need one more of these. So we can start to fill that in over here. Let's do a couple more ghosts. Get them as close as possible. And that's about how we're going to do it. Let me get one more of these call drinks. And it's barely fitting down there. So, all right, check this out. Now what I'm trying to do is I'm really trying to fit everything into the design. And we need to make sure that like this right here, that there's no overlapping because if there's any overlapping of the designs, then they're going to print together. So these two will print as pretty much one image and they'll be joined right here. And we don't want that. So let's make sure to spread that out move that over a little bit. All right, this one's a little bit too much to the side, actually. So we got to pull that back in, push this one over to the side a little bit more. Our little witch is good, except she's overlapping this one over here. So we do we do have to do a little bit of adjusting. This is something that you always need to take into consideration. Always make sure that nothing is overlapping and that your artwork is set up appropriately, because if not, when you get your DTF sheet, it's not going to be right. It's going to have images that are stuck together and really it's essentially going to be unusable. All right. So unfortunately, our little girl over here, our little witch, she ain't going to fit. 
So what we need to do is we start, this is when we need to start playing Tetris. So let's take her, let's rotate her 90 degrees, and we can definitely get her to fit there like that. All right, so we did pretty good. Now, what I like to do sometimes is actually go ahead and maybe take a few of these, maybe take this one, rotate it and see how it fits. And if I can see that it can fit a little bit better, give me a little bit of, ex of extra space, I'll leave it like that. And then I'll just start moving a few over as well to optimize the space and just to make sure that we're, you know, taking up as much of the gang sheet as possible without any overlapping. Now, so far, everything is looking good. Okay, so, so far, everything does look good. Now we have an extra empty space here. Are we just gonna leave it? No, why would we leave it? That makes no sense. So in this case, what I like to do is if I already have everything that I need printed for any custom orders or whatever I need, and I have any extra space filled in, I'll just fill it in with my logo. And a lot of the times I'm not gonna care about the sizing on this one because I'm just gonna be trying to fill in the space, get as much as I can, and I'll just make myself a few work t-shirts or simply just make a few extra prints. It's really up to you. But really the whole point that I'm trying to make here is just make sure that you fill in as much as you possibly can for the gang sheet. So that way you can optimize all of the space, you can save money, you might even be able to shave off a foot or so if you structure everything, if you place everything correctly. This has happened to me before. I've been able to save a few bucks by simply just making sure that I set the layout correctly and really by just playing some Tetris with my images. Now, the last thing I do want to cover is going to be the background. So remember how I said that we have our white background or our black background so that way we can see what's going on? Well, always, please, please, I cannot stress this enough, please, always make sure that you turn it off before you save your image. If you don't do that, if you leave this background on there, you're going to have an entire gang sheet with a white background. And that is not going to be good. That is going to be completely unusable. That's going to be a waste of money. So do not do that. Always make sure, turn it off. Turn it off like a light switch. Make sure you see your checkered pattern in the back before you actually save your image. Now, speaking about saving, when we go to save, we always wanna make sure that we save it as a PNG. Now, some places might allow you to send in a PSD file or a PDF file or even a TIFF file, a TIF file, but for the most part, you're gonna be wanting to save this as a PNG. It's gonna be the easiest to work with. It's gonna give you your transparent design and really it's gonna give you the smallest file size because if you save something like, let's say a PSD file or a Photoshop file, the sizing is gonna be really big. The sizing for that's gonna be large because it takes into consideration all of the different layers and everything. And on top of that, you also have to send in the original images. So my suggestion is gonna be just simply save it as a PNG file. When you go to save, it's gonna ask you what you want. Do you want to have a large file size, a medium or a smallest? I always keep it at medium. Now, again, this is on Photoshop. It might be a little bit different depending on what you're doing, but I always keep it at medium. So that way the file size is not too big and that way it doesn't take too long to actually save. If you do it at the smallest file size, the saving for this is gonna be forever. Well, I mean, I guess it's really gonna depend on your computer. On my computer, when I go to save at the smallest file size, depending on how big the image is, it, it's gonna take a bit. Sometimes it'll take maybe five, 10 minutes. But if I keep it at medium, it'll probably take maybe one to two minutes, so it's not too bad. But again, it's gonna depend on how big the image is. That's pretty much everything that you need to know to be able to set up your gang sheets on Photoshop or even on GIMP, because again, on GIMP, it's gonna be practically the same thing, except just a little bit of a different layout. But all of the different principles that I talked about, you know, making sure that you have the proper resolution, the proper width, the height, all of that stuff is going to be essentially interchangeable within any software or any program that you use to actually set up your gang sheet. Now, after this, your gang sheet is going to be ready to submit. You're going to be able to send it off to whoever you use for your DTF transfers, and they shouldn't have any issues printing them out for you. Now, as far as DTF providers, there's a few different ones that you can choose from. Lately, I have been using DTF transfers from Ninja Transfers, and honestly, I really like them. They have really good quality, they feel great, and their colors really pop. The only thing I'm not a huge fan of is the fact that they're cold peel. So simply what that means is you're gonna have to wait for the transfer to cool down before you peel off the carrier. Now, there are other companies that have hot peel, like let's say TKO Sales. TKO Sales has hot peel, where as soon as that press pops up, you can go ahead and peel off the carrier, and you're good to go. But again, this is all personal preference. Some people might not like the hot peel. 
because it might not work for them. You're going to have to practice with it and just find out what works for you and which one you prefer. But if you want to check out Ninja Transfers, the link to them will be down in the description below. Quick note, it is an affiliate link. So if you click on it and make a purchase, I will get a small commission. Also remember, the Photoshop link is also down there, which is also an affiliate link. You don't have to click on those, but it truly does help me out a lot if you do. And I really appreciate it. So thank you in advance. If you do choose to click on them, I, again, really appreciate it. So if you found this video helpful, please make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that little bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. Remember, we cover pretty much anything that you need to know in the t-shirt business. So if there's anything that you're having troubles with or anything you want to learn, drop it down in the comments below. Huge thank you once again to everyone for watching. My name is Mario with Neko Prince, and I'll catch you all next time. Peace.